The internet sucks. Well, not all the time. But when it sucks, it really sucks. Because if you spend any time online at all, you've come across misinformation. Misinformation is everywhere. And it has a deep effect on you. The things you see online influence how you act, how you vote, how you spend your money. But not just you. Misinformation impacts how other people vote, how other people spend money. Which is a lot scarier since misinformation can create an alternate reality for people. And decisions made at the voting booth that are based on falsehoods will shape the world we all live in for decades. We're MediaWise Campus Correspondents, a group of college and graduate students teaching fact-checking and media literacy skills at campuses across the country. And in this video, we're going to break down the most crucial skills we teach in our live workshops. And by the end, hopefully you'll have all the tools you need to identify and more importantly, not spread misinformation. Down in the description, you can find the timestamps for all the videos we're going to cover if you want to skip ahead. And before we get started, go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any of our other fact-checking videos. Okay, now let's get into it. Hello there, I'm Kobe, and in this first lesson, we're going to talk about what misinformation is, why it spreads, and cover some fact-checking basics. Misinformation is any piece of false or misleading content that has been shared online. Literally anyone can share misinformation. Your mom, your grandparents, your uncle, your sisters, your brothers. Public figures do it all the time. But when people share misinformation, it's because they have a genuine emotional connection to it and are genuinely trying to help. We'll touch on that more in a bit. But disinformation is when people are sharing false information on purpose, and we hate that. There's tons of reasons why someone may want to create disinformation. To make money, to change your mind, to gain followers or clout, and to disrupt democracy. So how do you even spot these types of posts, pics, or videos? Well, here's a foolproof method. Whenever you see something online and it makes you go, what the f***? Chances are you could be looking at misinformation. No, but really, posts that make us feel shocked, angry, sad, surprised, really any intense emotional reaction could signal that what you're seeing is false, or at the very least, in need of a lot of context. Another more scientific approach to finding out if something is false is to ask yourself three questions, which were developed by the Stanford History Educational Group. Learn more about them in the link in the description. Stanford literally studied how professional fact checkers debunk claims, and they boiled it down to these three questions. Who's behind the information? What's the evidence? And what are other sources even saying? Take a look at this viral TikTok, and then we'll put these three questions into practice. There is a place in the US where murder is legal. It is literally called the zone of death. This all takes place in Yellowstone National Park. Here are the state lines, and you can see that the park crosses over into Montana and Idaho. And that is the problem. You see this little 50 mile strip of land in Idaho? That is where murder is legal, and here's why. In all criminal proceedings in the US, the jury has to live in both the state and the district in which a crime took place. In other words, if there is any crime that happens in this little strip of land, the jury in the trial has to be people that live in this little strip of land. The problem is that no one lives there, so the case would just get thrown out. Okay, so question one, who's behind the information? Sometimes it is as simple as checking the person's bio to see if they're an expert in the field or the area they're talking about. And here, I'm not getting any sense that this person has a law degree or some expertise in any legal field. Question two, what's the evidence? Well, there isn't any. They provided some maps, but no concrete evidence or sources like previous cases where this has happened, or legal documents that set this as a precedent. Now, really, you could stop here and choose not to share this based on no evidence alone, but let's move on to question three. What are the other sources saying? Doing a quick keyword search with the phrase, is murder legal in the zone of death? I was able to find plenty of fact checks, including articles from PolitiFact and USA Today that debunked it. Easy, right? These three questions are proven to be a super simple way to keep yourself from sharing false information. But to ensure that you're getting the most out of these questions, in the next section, we're going to cover how to get the best results when searching online. Hi, everyone. I'm Lauren. Now, asking yourself who's behind the information, what's the evidence, and what other sources are saying are really the building blocks of any fact check. 
But to make sure you're getting the most credible information from the best sources, you should use a skill called lateral reading, which is another Stanford History Education Group term. Here's how it works. Most of us read up and down the page, right? We find an article and we read the top, then let's face it, kind of skim to the bottom. But fact checkers do things a little differently. They read laterally. They open up a bunch of tabs and read across all of them to learn all that they can about who's behind the information to judge if they're a good source. For example, I found this article from a website called the Babylon Bee. If you're familiar with the site, just bear with me for a sec. They reported that we only have 12 years left until experts change the timeline on global warming again. But doing a little lateral reading, I got off the side I was on, opened a fresh tab, and searched Babylon B to find out more about them. Then I opened another tab, and another, and pretty easily found multiple websites and articles that described the Babylon B as a conservative Christian satire website. Lateral reading is a great way to make sure that when you're trying to answer question three, what other sources are saying, that those sources are credible and actually worth your time. The only downside is that your tabs will look like a hot mess, but that's totally fine. It means that you're doing it right. Now, when you're searching, you also need to use a term called click restraint. Basically, when you do a keyword search, you should restrain yourself and resist the urge to just click on the very first option. Just because it's first doesn't mean it's the best or the most credible. Instead, take some time to look at the results and make sure you're not, you know, clicking on an ad on accident. I promise, taking an extra 10 seconds at the front end of your search will save you a lot of time in the long run. Hey everyone, it's Lauren, and in this lesson, we're going to focus on fact-checking viral photos and videos. Now, sometimes the photos you see online are straight up digitally manipulated, photoshopped or edited, but most of the time, when we classify an image as misinformation, it's because it's either outdated or used in the completely wrong context. Fortunately, there are plenty of really easy and free tools that you can use to fact check these kinds of claims. It just comes down to remembering to use them before you share. Let's take a look at this photo, which went viral following the 2021 winter storm in Texas, which brought record low temperatures and caused widespread power outages. It says, a helicopter running on fossil fuel spraying a chemical made from fossil fuels onto a wind turbine made with fossil fuels during an ice storm is awesome. To fact check it, we're just going to do a quick reverse Google image search. Doing this, we'll be able to tell if the photo is real, if the helicopter was somehow digitally added to the photo, or if it's just being taken out of context. I took a screenshot of the image since we don't want the text to influence our results and went to images.google.com. Uploading the photo will bring up all the instances where this exact photo exists online. One of the results the search brought up was this article from the Associated Press, which reported that this photo was taken in 2015 and in Sweden, and that the helicopter was spraying hot water, not chemicals. And despite this taking, what, 30 seconds to fact check, this photo was shared super widely across social media. It also helped spread the false claim shared by politicians that renewable energy sources were to blame for the blackouts. They weren't. Embarrassing. Let's try another. Take a look at this TikTok video, which is problematic for a number of reasons. As we've mentioned multiple times now, the first question you want to ask yourself when fact checking is who is behind the information? So let's do a reverse image search of this person's profile picture since, you know, they look like a doctor to find out more about them. This time we'll do it on mobile using the Chrome app. Hold down on the image until you get the pop-up to search Google for this image. And go figure, it's actually just a stock picture of a woman with a stethoscope. Like, Really? This, unfortunately, happens all the time. People will use stock images or sometimes photos of actual doctors and pair them with really bad medical advice to try to sell you something because they know seeing a person in a white coat tends to give them some credibility. This is so messed up and not to mention super dangerous. So remember, if you see a photo and it seems a little off, just take that time to image search it. But let's move on to fact-checking videos since the process is really similar. 
If you ever see a clip you're curious about, you can use the free Chrome extension called Fake News Debunker by Invid and We Verify to fact check it. We'll leave the link for this tool in the description. Basically, all the extension does is pull still images from the video for you to then do a reverse image search with. Take a look at this video I found on YouTube, which claims to be a trailer for Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. I have some questions for you. Professor. I know he's working under your orders. As it stands, I haven't heard any buzz about a new Harry Potter movie, so that's red flag number one. But to be sure, let's fact check the video. After you have the extension downloaded, you can tap the icon and click Assistant for Current Page. You'll then want to select the Keyframes tool, and it'll pull the best images to do a reverse Google image search. And clicking through the photos, it's pretty clear that the creator just spliced together a bunch of clips from the other movies. So while there might be another Harry Potter movie in the future, this one isn't it. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Vanessa. In this lesson, we'll build on all the skills we've taught so far and use them to identify what's called deep fakes and cheap fakes. Deep fakes are videos that have been edited using an algorithm to replace the person in the video with someone else's face to make it look like they said or did things they didn't actually do. This video of Tom Cruise? Deep fake. Did they reboot The Shining with Jim Carrey? No. Deep fake. This horrifying video of Jennifer Lawrence with Steve Buscemi's face? Yeah, that's a deepfake. While all these are meant to be funny, when deepfakes first started popping up on social media, people were pretty concerned and worried how they might pose a threat to democracy. Fortunately, deepfakes haven't been our downfall. Yet. But you should still know how to recognize a deepfake if you come across one in the wild. But to be clear, the technology is only getting better, so these tips aren't foolproof. To start, I always look at the teeth. They might be a little blurred out. Blotchy skin tones. The technology has to use so many reference photos to create a realistic deepfake. So the skin might not always look consistent. If they aren't blinking in the video, that might be a clue. Awkward or unnatural facial expressions. Like if the facial expression doesn't match the tone of what they're saying. And weird hair. Deepfakes have a hard time replicating hair so you won't see things like frizz or flyaways. There are some tools that are starting to pop up to help identify deep fakes. One that I've been using lately is called Deepware. You can either upload the video or drop in the link, and Deepware will let you know if it detects a deep fake, plus gives you a percentage for how confident it is. But the best tip for identifying deep fakes is to just be skeptical. If you see a video of someone doing something way out of character, use those three questions from Shegg as I mentioned, deepfakes didn't pose as big a threat as fact checkers thought they would. Instead, the main thing you should be looking out for on your timeline are cheap fakes. Cheap fakes are lower quality photos and videos that have been manipulated using cheaper, more low effort editing software. Cheap fakes can also edit out important context or maybe reorder clips to alter the narrative to deceive you and shape your opinion, which makes them a lot more worrisome on social media than deepfakes. For example, take a look at this video showing environmental activist Greta Thunberg that was created and shared on social media. So uh, I would just tell him to, to tell the situation as it is. Since the climate crisis doesn't exist, how can we expect people to want climate action? That's a fair point. Uh since the climate crisis doesn't exist, since the climate crisis doesn't exist, since the climate crisis doesn't exist, how the person who made that really thought they did something there. But this is a good example that shows just how easy it is to pull an out of context clip and create misinformation around it. To fact check this, I did a keyword search using the exact quote to try to find the original source. And here's the full portion of that interview with MSNBC. What we need now is to raise awareness and to create public opinion to, to treat the crisis like a crisis because if people are not aware of the crisis that we face, of course they won't put pressure on the elected leaders, so I would just tell him to to tell the situation as it is. Um, 
Yeah. Because, I mean, yes, you, you could say, I meet with a lot of, of uh, world leaders and they say, I can't do anything because I don't have the support from voters. Well, how can you expect support and pressure from voters if you are not treating the crisis like a crisis? Since the climate crisis doesn't exist, how can we expect people to want climate action? So Greta isn't saying that the climate crisis doesn't exist. She said that voters won't take it seriously if they don't believe it exists. It's all about context, people. Cheap fakes, like pretty much all misinformation, are created to play on your emotions. They are designed to get a rise out of you. So before you share impulsively, pause and take the time to look into it. Hey everybody, it's Maddie. Thanks for hanging on with us. In this final lesson, we're gonna be talking about all the sketchy red flags you should be on the lookout for when you're scrolling through social media. Starting with cross-posted content, we see this all the time. A screenshot of a tweet gets shared as a meme on Instagram, a TikTok gets reposted onto YouTube. But when you see this happening, remember that context is crucial and it might have lost a lot of it jumping from platform to platform. When this happens, you should try heading to the original source or creator's page. It's totally possible that they have more important information in the caption that got lost along the way. Or maybe they posted an update clarifying what was in the original video. Now, I know we all love a good meme. They can be funny ways to comment on current events or topics, but memes have become a sneaky way to share misinformation, mainly because they are super easy to create spread quickly, and they use recognizable visuals that can appeal to a lot of different age groups. I think we can all agree nothing ruins a day quite like seeing a family member share a bad meme. Take this Drake meme for example. This format was really popular, but this version downplays the severity of COVID-19, and it also spreads the false claim that the COVID vaccine alters your DNA. This easily, easily crosses the line from being satire into the realm of misinformation. So if you see a meme that's getting a lot of attention, remember that these things usually get a lot less funny when you have all the facts. And finally, stay skeptical when you see really newsy claims from unverified sources. Does the blue check mark automatically mean that something is true? Absolutely not. All it means is that the person, company, or group's identity has been confirmed on the platform. But especially in time of breaking news, it's way better to just wait until three to four sources you're actually familiar with are all reporting the same thing rather than retweet some random person's take. Well, you made it to the end. By now, you should definitely be an expert in spotting misinformation. We want to say thank you to Meta for supporting the work and the Campus Correspondent Program. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button to see more media literacy content like this. And remember, misinformation affects all of us, and the quality of the information we put out in the world might directly impact the decisions made by someone else. So do your part. Be media wise and fact check before you share.